For the second time in my life, I was contacted by a watch company to ask if I'd like to borrow a watch to review. It's hard not to get excited when said company is Nevada Grenchen. It's also a little worrying when you're literally nothing but a random guy on YouTube, and if I didn't like it, how would I actually feel about expressing that without burning this new relationship? It's always interesting to see the small to medium channels getting a fair bit of success by inviting controversy, but personally, I have no interest in that. I will not hide flaws, but I would much rather concentrate on the positives than the negatives in any watch. And if I outright don't like something, I won't bother with it at all. In this case, it's nearly all positives, and what a gorgeous piece it is. It's also fascinating since, much like a lot of these resurrected brands, there's solid history. I was offered almost any choice to review, and I picked the broad arrow. It's an eye-catching, and to my eyes at least, beautiful watch that looks like little else around. Is it worth its asking price? Well, let's find out. If you're already subscribing to my channel, thank you so much. If not, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. Thank you. Nevada was founded in 1879 in Grenchen in Switzerland. I've read somewhere that Grenchen is not particularly attractive, but from my brief googling, it looks nice enough. And it's also home to some other well-known brands, such as Satina, Fortis and Breitling, to name a few. So why highlight a little-known Swiss town on your watch? I've seen a few people comment on this, so I had to find out. Apparently in the 60s and 70s, there was a conflict with the brand Movado, which sounded a bit too similar to Nevada for some. Hence, the compromise was Nevada Grenchen, which certainly doesn't sound anything like Movado. There were some fantastic looking watches in production, such as the Antarctic, the Deathmaster, with a water resistance of a thousand meters, and various other interesting pieces. Much like many other brands, Nevada did not survive the so-called quartz crisis and went the way of the dodo. Luckily for us, the renewed interest in mechanical watches has seen Nevada rise like the phoenix from the ashes. And this is one brand that definitely deserves a triumphant return. I mean, just check out the Antarctic Spider on their website for one. So I picked the Broad Arrow Automatic 8600-1A, which is both beautiful and capable. The watch appears to be an almost exact reissue of the Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver from the 1960s. And this one hasn't even grown in size to fit us today, which is often the case. It's still a very manageable 38mm diameter. I've always felt this is a bit small for my wrist, which I grant you is not acceptable since people had large wrists in the 20th century also, but however you feel about sizes, the long slender lugs help make it look good on large wrists. And the large chronograph buttons also add to the overall size and perspective on wrist. This is a friction vessel with no clicks, and in addition to the normal 60 minute scale, there's also a 12 hour scale and a tachymeter chapter ring. An original ad from the 60s advertises the watch as performing every timing function known to man, and I tend to agree with this. But that's only if your eyesight is similar to that of an eagle, or you travel with a magnifying glass and never ever knock your bezel out of place. But whatever, let's all agree that it looks cool, and whilst you'll never use a tachymeter, that you may or not be able to see, is a welcome addition that adds both visual depth and a bit of an X factor. I shared a few wrist shots of the watch to some watch communities I'm part of, and there's nothing but smiles for this one. The design is eye-catching, and the red details, sub-dials, and bold hands of the dial in no small part adds to that first impression. So let's get a bit closer to those. To me, the red detail of the minute recorder on our right is what sticks out the most. I learned something new here with yacht racing. A warning signal sounds five minutes before the race starts, when a white and red flag is raced. So being the debonair gentleman that you are, you obviously flew in from Reykjavik to Nice, drove your Alfa Romeo Montreal to the harbour, where you can now not only measure the speed at which you travelled, what the time currently is where your journey originated, 
but you can now start your chronometer and have a visual indication of when your ship needs to cross that start line. Yes, it can seem a little silly, but let's remember that wristwatches are as intricately linked to travel, adventure and good times as sports cars and clothing. So from that perspective, it's exactly as it should be, both now and in the 1960s. The second dial is attractive and ticks away quietly as it should. It's handy to have an indication that your watch is running, and whilst it is small, legibility is good. There's a manual version of this watch also that has the Nevada logo prominently just under the 12 position. But I love this text only logo here, which is clearly a time accurate typeface. It adds to the era specific look. At just above 6, we have the text that again states that this watch can do anything you want it to. I think C Diver is slightly ambitious with a friction dial, but not impossible. Covering all these many details is a double dome sapphire glass rising above the bezel rather prominently, which to my eyes at least looks spectacular from an angle. The surrounding aluminium bezel has no clicks as mentioned and moves freely in both directions. That said, it has a nice feel to it and there is some resistance, so it would actually take some effort to knock it. Flipping the watch over and we're back in the 1960s with only a few bits of text, but the main point of interest being the shield-like logo. Underneath, we would find the Celita SW510BHB. Nevada never made their own movements, so this is not a compromise or stretch in this reissue. And it's also good news for ownership, since getting it serviced shouldn't cost you a wrist and a leg. The stainless steel case with the slender lugs is attractive, with its polished details, and I love the dual lugs since this is clearly a watch that will look good on many, many different straps. It's worth pointing out the push buttons and crown too. The push and reset feels mechanically perfect. The crown is not screwed down, and we're dealing with 10 ATM or 100 meters water resistance here. I reckon that's fine for washing your hands, but I'd not be playing water polo wearing this one. Actually, I'll never play water polo anyway, so that's okay. When it comes to straps and bracelets, you can order this with a fitted base of rice bracelet, leather, or this version and another couple from vintage specialist Forstner Bands. These stick ones do scream third party and feel very to mentally stone me for this blasphemy but I think it looks really cool and it fits right into the aesthetics of the 60s. This is a screw and link version and these are all individual links that move with your wrist and are easy to adjust yourself. Nevada even gives you a screwdriver in a box to get stuck in. If you're still watching this video now 8 minutes in, here's a reward just for you. Nevada kindly gave me a promo code for one extra free strap with your purchase. I'll put the code in the video description below. The buckle and clasp is pressed and very basic. There's no push button release or any of that, which is what it is, which is to say acceptable but not great. Forstner will sell you a mill clasp if this bothers you. The final thing to cover is loom. Let's just have a quick look at this, appreciate it for what it is and quickly move on. Nothing to see here. Well something, but not much. I will simply say this. If you love Loom and this is very important to you, then there is nothing to see here. Move along. This thoughtful and respectfully reissued Nevada Grange Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver retails for around US dollars 2000, depending on your strap and bracelet preference. That's obviously not exactly spare change, and there are a lot of other watches that you would consider in this range. For my money, the obvious competitor here with a similar amount of history and good looks is the Hanhart 417ES, which has a pretty cool Steve McQueen connection. However, I feel this Nevada has the slight edge, with so much depth to its dial and character filled design, such as the broad arrow hour hand. And unlike the 417, you don't need to fully commit to a large leather bund strap to do it justice. 
If you are looking for a 38mm diameter chronograph, then honestly, I can't see a better option this watch in both the looks and functionality department. And I think it looks good on a large wrist also. In my opinion, this is an absolute home run of a reissue. It looks to a layman's eye identical to the original, and if anything, you'll have a better movement and crystal, ensuring that this will last you for a long, long time. I also love what Nevada Grenchen is releasing and working on, and I can honestly say that I can't wait to see what's next. I'll leave the link to the site in the description. So I hope you enjoy getting to know Nevada Grenchen and this watch a little better, and I'll see you next time.